Greetings sailors, welcome to the next part of my look at the brand new Soviet cruisers. It's not even a preview anymore because they've actually come out already. And this time I am looking at tiers 5, 6 and 7, the Kirov, the Budioni and the Scores. And I've actually also remembered to include the uh, the German cruisers in my stat gathering this time round, which for some reason with the low tiers just completely went out of my head. I don't know why. Anyway, so we're starting off obviously with the Kirov. Uh, this is an interesting one because it really is a, a quite a, a, a step change from tiers 2, 3 and 4. The tiers 2, 3 and 4 weren't really that different from their compatriots, from their same tier counterparts. I mean at tier 4 you start to see more differences but um, when you go from tier 4 to this it's more like going from the St. Louis to the Phoenix on the American line or the, the Kuma to the Furutaka. So it, it's that kind of a change in play style. Now this is the first of the um, kind of big gunned Soviet cruisers and actually the Soviet cruiser gun progression is strange because you get those um, mix of 152 and 130 mil guns at two, tiers 2, 3 and 4. This goes up to 7 inch guns, 180 millimeters. And then for tiers 6 and 7 and 8 you go back to 6 inch guns, 152 mil guns. And then at tier 9 you get the 7 inches again, so <laughs> the progression's a bit strange and it might make this thing seem overgunned compared to its compatriots, except not really. Because of course the Japanese cruisers have got 8 inch guns at, tiers, uh, at tier 5 and up. So it is a bit odd in that regard, the progression of the line, but uh, they're very good guns for a tier 5, even if they don't quite have the same shell damage as the Furutaka's guns do. Uh, they're not bad at all. Now it's a 3x3 three three arrangement with two in the front and uh, one turret in the back. So, although they don't hit as hard as the full attacker's guns, you get more of them. The reload is also exactly the same as the full attacker, it's a 15 second reload, so it doesn't fire faster, but again, you've got more of those guns, so I think that's a fair trade. The turret turn is actually a lot more like the Omaha, it's around about the same kind of level, it's sort of, uh, in fact, it's slightly better. The Omaha and the Murmansk and the Marblehead all have a 24 second, 180 degree turret turn time, this has got 22 and a half seconds. And of course you can improve that slightly with expert marksman down to about 21. So it actually turns as good as the, the 6 inch gunned cruisers in terms of its turrets. And that's a good thing because the ship itself doesn't. But I'm maybe getting ahead of myself there a little bit. Damage wise the shells as you expect don't do as much as the Furutaka's guns. But more than the Omaha. I mean it's actually just a little bit ahead of the AP shells of the Königsberg. And those are interesting because even though they're technically the smallest guns, they do way more damage than the, the six inch guns of the American cruisers. And there is actually one other way in which this relates to the Königsberg. This is the first of the cruisers where you start to see your range really uh, pick up over your allies. The range is very comparable to the German cruisers, at least for tiers five, six and seven. They are usually at most a couple hundred meters apart. So. If you enjoy sniping from range with your German cruisers, it's really that same kind of a play style with these ships. And the accuracy, uh, the dispersion stats seem to be very similar as well. So they do enjoy a very similar amount of accuracy. In terms of the AP shell penetration though, I mean it's known that the German cruisers have got very good AP penetration. But I could not tell you for the uh, the Soviet ones at all. I just don't have my hands on that kind of data. It's not in the client, unfortunately. It does have some secondaries, but they're not that great at this tier. Uh, although, you could kind of fit, I mean, I say secondaries, the AA are secondaries as well, really. Um, in terms of its anti-aircraft, in theory, it's not bad. It's still not quite as good as the Murmansk, but it beats the Furutaka into a, into a cocked hat and uh, it's probably comparable to or better than the Omaha's uh, anti-aircraft as well. So again, you can look at the, the caliber of the AA guns and how many AA guns they have and the DPS of the AA guns and uh, it's a little hard to tell because you don't see the, the internal stats for these things but uh, it seems like the AA for tier 5 is actually pretty decent. However, being a tier 5 you don't get the defensive AA cooldown so there is that. 
Now this does have torpedoes, and the Svetlana actually, somebody rightfully pointed out that going from tier 4 to tier 5, you actually drop torpedo range. It is exactly like the uh, Soviet destroyers in that way. The Izhyaslav going into the Genevni, you actually lose a kilometer of torpedo range. This is exactly the same. You go from 5 kilometers to 4 kilometers, although the actual damage of them is pretty respectable, and they're pretty fast as well. It's 14.4k which is exactly the same as the Mamansks. It's roughly the a, a little ahead of what the Königsberg has, and uh, really it is only the range that it, it lacks behind. So I, actually, all of the Tier 5 cruisers get uh, torpedoes, but this by far has the least range at 4 kilometers, and the next worst is the, uh, the Omaha at 5.5. But like I said, they're fairly fast. 64 knots is pretty decent, and the reload is just over a minute. It's a minute and 10 seconds, so that's all right as well. So they're kind of last-ditch torpedoes. But honestly, you're not going to want to get close enough to use them most of the time, because as you may have noticed from the replay, this thing turns very badly and it takes damage very easily. It has just enough armor to be problematic. The shells seem to penetrate for full damage a lot of the time, and even sailing bow on towards somebody, you can still get Citadel very easily. So you're going to need that range. You really are. And that actually kind of neatly takes me on to, having said it doesn't turn so well, um, the speed and the maneuverability of it. Now, the actual raw speed is pretty average, 35 and a half knots, just ahead of the foot attacker and the Omaha. And in fact, actually, I think it's the fastest in a straight line at uh, tier 5. They're all around 32 and a half to 34 knots. So at 35.5, this is actually uh, the fastest. However, the fly in the ointment is the turn radius. And actually, it's a double fly in the ointment. It's, all, it's the turn radius and the rudder shift. And this is another thing you're going to have to get used to. Yes, these Soviet cruisers from tier 5 upwards have really good range, comparable to the German cruisers. But the turn radiuses are horrendous. Now, tier 6 isn't so bad, but we're going to come to that. But all the others from tier 5 upwards, we're talking battleship turn radiuses. And in fact, in the case of the tier 7, the scores... Uh, it, it's we're talking the biggest battleships in terms of the turn radius, but we will come to that horror story when we get there. The Kirov itself has a turn radius of 860, which is very slightly better than the Amagi at tier 8, but actually worse than the North Carolina. So we're talking on this tier 5 cruiser the same turning circle as a tier 8 battleship. Yeah, it's not good. 860 meters is pretty wide. The next worst at tier 5 is the Furutaka with 750, so that's over 100 meters better. And then the Omahas all have 600, the Königsberg has 680. So, yeah, it does not turn well. It absolutely does not. You are going to have to be cognizant of that when you're playing this thing. This is no nimble light cruiser. It's a light cruiser in terms of armor, you better believe, but in terms of how it moves, no. So that's the price you pay for having good accuracy, good guns, good range, is that it turns like a whale. Now that is a theme all the way up the Russian cruiser line. With the possible exception of, uh, ex except, well, I can't, I can't even words, exception of the tier 6. The rudder shift time only compounds that, it's 7.8 seconds. Uh, the Königsberg comes close at 6.9. The Furutaka uh, is uh, 5.7, same as the Omaha. And actually, the Marblehead, I noticed when I was doing the stats, the Marblehead really gets shafted because it's the same, 7.8, but it's a much tighter turn radius. 7.8 seconds rudder shift on a turn radius of 600 meters is much nicer than on a turn radius of 860 meters. So, yeah. And then, of course, there's the Murmansk which has the best of all of them in terms of the turn radius of 590 and a rudder shift of 3.8 seconds. Yeah, so the Mamansk is a bit OP in that regard. So, yeah, this is, this is the major drawback of this line right here is how badly these things turn. And that's one of the reasons why I, I struggle to do well with this thing. Damage-wise, I was easily having 50, 60k games, which is really good for a cruiser with just guns. For a, for a tier 5 cruiser, but uh, in terms of actually staying alive and keeping my health, it was a struggle, because you take damage so easily, so you're going to have to be hyper aware of that when you're driving this thing, and it seems to be more of a problem for the Kirov than it is for maybe anything until you get to tier 10, but even then the tier 10 isn't as bad 
The tier 10 is huge, and when it's broadside, it takes a lot of damage. But at least it doesn't take so much damage when it's bow or stern on. I think all that's left is uh, detection ranges. Now, at 14.2, it is at the high end. It, it's, in fact, the highest of uh, the, uh, the, the Tier 5 cruisers. And again, that kind of ties in with the Soviet destroyers. They've all generally, um, I think over Tier 5, got some of the worst detection ranges for destroyers. That is reflected in these cruisers. They've all got really bad detection ranges, comparatively speaking. So 14.2 kilometers, it's not great. You will get spotted way before other uh, Tier 5 cruisers that might be around you. I mean, in comparison, the Thur attack has got 12.2. The Omaha uh, with the Sea Hulls got 13.5. Uh, Koningsberg's 12.4, Murmansk is 13.1, Marblehead's also 13.5, so you will get seen first. So overall this does seem like a ship for keeping your range in, because otherwise you're going to lose a lot of health and die very quickly. And I think this is going to limit the popularity of this ship. Some people are really going to like it because of its guns. The guns are really very good. It's kind of approaching the firepower of the foot attacker with the range of the Königsberg and the accuracy of the Königsberg which is a in terms of its firepower that's a nice comp uh, uh, compensation it's a nice um, what's the word I'm looking for it's a nice something conflagration no that's not the right word either I don't know my mind's just suddenly gone blank there um, but it's nice it's nice but the offset for that is how this thing moves around in the water so on the basis of that, a lot of people are not going to like it because it's worse in uh, how it manoeuvres than the foot attacker. And the foot attacker is no nimble spring chicken by any means. So that's um, really it for the stats. I've not really even had much chance to talk about the game. <laughs> but this was a good game, as you can see, damage-wise. Um, but I took a lot of damage, an awful lot of damage. And uh, I was probably lucky at several places so that I didn't just sink, in fact. But uh, as you can see on the damage counter though, 60k, I mean, I'd be happy to get kind of 30, 40k in something like an Omaha to get 60k just with the guns. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, very nice indeed. And um, because they are 7 inch guns, it's well worth using AP a lot, of t a lot of the time. Now, I actually probably could have been using AP against this uh, this battleship here. Instead, I was trying to set him on fire. And I did do some fire damage in this game, as you'll see. But... Uh, the Citadels, six Citadels, 77 hits, um, yeah, it was a, a pretty nice game damage-wise. It's just, I had to really quite work for it. And I think that's, that it's going to be one of these ships that's not going to necessarily be a comfortable ship for a lot of people. You are going to have to work for the damage. You are going to have to work to stay alive. So, uh, 50k damage from the AP alone, HE was another 11k, a couple of k from the fires, so overall that, that was a pretty nice result and I'd be happy with that in any other tier 5 cruiser. On to tier 6 now, the Budioni, and this actually is the one that feels, um, I think, strongest tier per tier, at least of the three I'm showing you today. Uh, it, it doesn't have some of the problems that the rest of them do. And the principal one is the turning radius is actually a lot more like its contemporaries, but we will come to that. So, as I mentioned, this one drops down to six, uh, six inch guns. And this is, by the way, exactly the same map, but a different uh, game mode, as you can see. So you've again got three by three turrets, two in the, uh, the bow section and one on the aft. And this puts it a lot closer in range uh, to the Cleveland which, of course, has also got these 152 mil guns, except that has more of them. So again, it's that kind of trade. You don't have as many guns, but you've got better range. It's got a pretty good rate of fire. It's dead on the same as the Cleveland. You reload in eight seconds, so it's that kind of uh, play style in terms of just pelting shells at your enemies over and over again. The turret turn time is actually fairly significantly better than the Cleveland at 25 seconds, which actually puts it just behind the Nuremberg. And as the Cleveland's over 30 seconds, as is the Aoba, it actually feels more responsive than the Cleveland. Range-wise, it is almost dead on the same as the Nuremberg. It's 16.6 kilometers, whereas the Nuremberg's 16 and a half. 
Uh, the Aoba's next after that at 14.9, and then the Cleveland's got 14.6. So, like I said, it's lacking, what, one gun? Or is it two guns compared to the... What, what, what's the Cleveland's configuration again? It's um, 4x3, isn't it? It's four triple turrets, and this has only got three triple turrets. So actually, no, it's lacking three guns, but you've got that extra range to work with. You've got the same rate of fire, you've got a better turret turn time, so... It is, in a lot of ways, very comparable to the Cleveland, at least in terms of its primary firepower. Damage-wise, though, the shells are actually very slightly worse in terms of Citadels. 3,100 for an AP Citadel versus 3,200. The fire chance is, however, exactly the same at 12% for both. So, uh, the Aoba, I mean, the Aoba's well out ahead with 17% uh, on its... Uh, HE shells, um, but in terms of uh, HE, I mean 12% is still pretty good, and given the rate of fire, you've just as much chance to set people on fire as you do with the Cleveland, which is going to be such good news for all the New York and uh, uh, New Mexico and, you know, all, all the other battleship drivers that, that might encounter this thing. Beware this thing, it will spam lots and lots of HE at you, just so you know. Anti-aircraft wise, um, I mean the Cleveland is the king of tier 6, nothing can touch the Cleveland. This is a lot more similar, so far as I can figure, to the other cruisers. Uh, it, it seems to be maybe just about ahead of the Aoba and uh, of the Nuremberg, neither of which are known for having fantastic AA. So, I mean it's there, it's not great, but it's there. Uh, you don't however get... Um, a, a, a catapult fighter with this thing. You do get a catapult plane, and not all of the cruisers have a catapult plane. This is the first of them that does, but it's a spotter plane only. I think, however, if I remember correctly, because I can't go and check not having the ships anymore, uh, you do get defensive AA fire as an option, as well as the hydroacoustic search, but I can't remember if I, I tried it with the defensive AA fire. But, uh, yeah, there's no comparison, though, to the Cleveland. I mean, the Cleveland just owns everything at, at Tier 6. It is ridiculously good. Torpedoes-wise, you've actually picked up an extra uh, two launchers, I think. Uh, the Kirov had two triple launchers. This has got two quintuple launchers. They're exactly the same in terms of damage and the range and the speed. The reload, however, is worse because they're it's more torpedoes being loaded into the tube, so it's nearly a two minute reload on these uh, two quintuple launchers. So it's it's a little bit, you know, again, these are going to be last resort torpedoes, but actually that's uh, a very apt uh, time that I just uh, uh, happen to be talking about that at this moment in the replay, because as you can see, the arc on these, um, the arc on the launchers, for those that have them, is very good. It's just they're all very short range until you get to, I think it's tier nine can't remember it. I think it's tier 9. So, again, last ditch torpedoes, but if you're close enough to get off five of these uh, 14,000 damage torps, you can do a lot of damage very quickly. Speed is pretty similar to the Kirov, uh, and again, um, similar to its contemporaries. It's 35 knots, which places it the same as the Aoba, and that's actually ahead of both the Cleveland and the Nuremberg. So it's reasonably speedy in a straight line, as was the Kirov. But the good news is that your turn radius is a lot better. It's 710 meters, which is the same as the Aoba. Uh, and actually just slightly better than the Nuremberg. Now the Cleveland wins out on this particular stat. It's got 660 meters. But uh, there's still that rudder shift. It does still have the worst rudder shift. It's just slightly worse than the uh, Aoba. So this thing actually handles like its contemporaries. It handles in the water a lot like an Aoba does. So uh, it, it's not, it doesn't feel unduly hampered. And I think that is the biggest reason why I would say uh, tier for tier of these three ships, this one's the strongest because it moves like the other tier six cruisers do. You don't have that handicap. But you also don't have significantly more uh, firepower. I mean, you can argue the tier 5 that the Kirov, uh, that, that it does have better firepower than its contemporaries because it's got more guns than the Furutaka. Its turrets turn better than the Furutaka. So this having, um, it, it's got the range and it does have the accuracy, but it doesn't really have that kind of punch that the Kirov has. So... Um, having said that, you know, that doesn't make it a bad ship at all. I think this is actually a really good ship, and it, it is easily... It, I think it stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Cleveland. It stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Aoba. Um, I think this is a very, very strong Tier 6, and it was quite nice to play. 
it's even actually almost the same as its contemporaries when it comes to air detection as well. It's actually slightly better, uh, a surface detection rather. Uh, it's actually slightly better than the um, the Cleveland in that regard. 13.1 clicks versus 13.3. The AOBA and the Nuremberg are both um, under 13. The Nuremberg's got 12.6. The AOBA's got 12.1. So you're not going to get spotted early like you are with the Kirov, at least. So uh, the air detection, however, um, it's not super good. It's 8.2 kilometers, but again, that's similar to the Cleveland. So, um, all in all, you, you you might almost call this the Soviet Cleveland. It's got it. It basically trains uh, trains <laughs> trades. It basically trades uh, guns for range. Uh, is that's how I would characterize it? And honestly, that feels like a very nice kind of um, swap. You don't quite have the raw shell output of the Cleveland, but you've got more range to use the shell output that you do have. And so that feels like a really nice trade. And I I mean, this isn't going to be, I think, even as damaging as the previous game, the, the Kirov game, but I still had fun playing this in the games where I played it. So you might not actually get quite as good damage results in terms of AP shells, at least, as the Kirov. Um... But if you're spamming those HE shells at, at uh, battleships and whatever, then uh, I think you can easily do as well, if not better. I don't think I had any spectacular damage games in this, but this was the most interesting of the... I mean, honestly, it was probably like three or four battles. I can't even remember offhand how many I played in this particular ship. It was kind of just enough to get a feel for um, how the guns worked, how it played, what I could get away with, what I couldn't get away with. Of all of them, I actually probably played the most games in the Kirov just because I was struggling to get uh, a match that I could uh, feel like I could use to show off what it could do and what its weaknesses were at the same time. And um, this this was not really so hard. I just had to play a couple of matches and went, okay, yeah, this is kind of Cleveland-ish. Ish. Now, actually, I, I did say, I mean, the Kirov is very, very fragile. This feels not quite so bad off, not nearly so bad off as the Kirov, which just seems to be one gigantic floating citadel attached to some very nice guns. And this, it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's alright. I mean, it's, I don't know the exact armour values for each bit of the ship, and the armour schemes in World of Warships are inherently more complicated than something like World of Tanks anyway, because there's, there's more internal armour modelling goes on as opposed to World of Tanks where there isn't any. But um, overall, I mean, it's still a light cruiser. This entire line are light cruisers. I would only, uh, I would say the only one where you start to feel like you have an appreciable amount of armor to work with is actually the tier 10, the Moskva. And that's only when you're bow on towards your enemies and you can start to bounce shots. You're not really gonna bounce a lot of shots in the rest of these cruisers though. But in this one, um, I, I mean, it's honestly I think a lot of people are going to go through the Kirov and they're going to find it maybe a hard grind it's maybe almost going to be like going through the Karlsruhe to get to the uh, Königsberg and I would say if you're going to if you are struggling you know maybe you're there right now with the Kirov if you're struggling with the Kirov the Budioni really does play quite differently and I think it's a much more comfortable ship to play and I think it's going to be a much more popular ship than the Kirov but a Kirov in the right hands is probably going to be feared because it just can do so much damage so this is the last uh, like dying bit of this match um, I think we actually won this one on points the, the replay ends in an odd place and I'm not quite sure why it ends when it ends because there's two enemy ships left alive and the points counter claims that we're not a, a thousand points but we must have been i think the replay must have been oh no there we go we actually jumped up because somebody got killed well wow. okay that was me not paying attention when i was previewing the footage earlier on clearly <laughs> so there we go um not really um so much uh damage wise was this a good game that was an awkward way to <laughs> say that sentence but it was still uh, a fairly fun game. Um, I got a decent score out of it. At least part of that was from capping, of course. But uh, it feels nice. It feels responsive. It doesn't feel like it's overly fragile. It's just got enough of everything. 
And uh, the only way in which the Cleveland is vastly superior is at A, closer ranges, and B, against aircraft. In all other regards, I think the, the Budion is just as nice to play. So then we come to the Tier 7, the scores, or however I've been, you know, the... the I don't know how you say this exactly. I know it's uh, the the guy himself, um, uh, Nikolai Scores, was uh, like a hero of the revolution, basically. But um, uh, he's... I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you say his name. I couldn't find a pronunciation guy, but I presume it's named after him. There's actually another one as well. The tier 8 is called the Chapayev, which is a, was another hero of the revolution. But... Uh, yeah. As to which of these ships actually existed, by the way, that kind of brings me on to that topic. I know some of them actually did. It was pointed out to me by Wargaming that, like the German cruisers, um, something like five out of the nine actually existed. But I neglected to ask which five, so <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Anyway, never mind. On to the stats. Now, I completely neglected hit points when I was talking about the uh, the tier 6. I mean, it was, again, comparable to its contemporaries. Um, this actually is uh, lagging a little bit behind. It's got roughly the same amount of health as the York, and the York was really on the low end to begin with. I mean, there's also the Atlanta, which is technically a cruiser, technically... But, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to talk about the Atlanta in this comparison very much. So it's 32,000 health, um, it's actually slightly lower than the York, 32.2 versus 32.6. The Miyoko's got nearly 40k, Pensacola's just uh, around 34k, so... I mean, it's not too big of a gap, but it's there. Again, the 6-inch 152mm guns, for those of you that, you know, might be... I'm just, I'm throwing both measurements in there, because why not? And this time round, you've actually um, you've you've gone from that two forward, one aft uh, configuration to uh, two turrets forward and two turrets aft. You also keep the same rate of fire as the tier six, so it's an eight second reload, which is better than anything bar the Atlanta, which has you know what, what's that five inch guns on the Atlanta, basically destroyer guns. So yeah, uh, you can pound those shells out. It really, in a lot of ways, plays the same in terms of its firepower but it isn't quite the same because it's just not as nimble and I'll come to that particular start I did mention this thing was pretty terror bad in that regard so uh, turret turn time 25 seconds again uh, ahead of almost everything I, I think the Pensacola is not too far behind at 30 seconds for its uh, 180 degree turret turn but um, it, it's just got the rate of fire it's got 4x3 turrets so um, you can see the amount of shells I can put up. Uh, this is going to be an HE spammer, absolutely. And although in range it hasn't really gone a lot extra over the Bidioni, it's 16.8, uh, so you've got an extra 200 meters to work with. That still puts it um, ahead of most of its contemporaries. The York does have a better range by half a kilometer, a good clear half a kilometer. So the York actually pulls ahead of it here. But 16.8 is still way better than the 15.6 and 15.7 of the Miyoko and Pensacola, respectively. So it's, um, yeah, it's 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 kind of the same but different. Some of what you had in the, uh, the Budioni is going to be familiar here. But I don't think for its tier it's quite as good a ship. Even though you do get a bit more firepower to play with. And... Uh, I, again, if you meet one of these things and you're in a battleship, expect it to just spam HE shells at you over and over and over. It's it's going to be like meeting... Uh, 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 what's the premium one called? I can't remember now. Wow, it's gone. It's completely gone. The... something. Nope. Nope. Anyway, never mind. Um, but that's tier 8. This is tier 7. So you're not going to be seeing quite as uh, uh, many big ships... But you still can see up to tier 9 ships with this thing, so, yeah. AP-wise, um, it's, I think, the same damage. Uh, slightly better damage, actually. Uh, 33,000 per Citadel, but at this point, that's lagging quite considerably behind everybody else with their 8-inch um, uh, guns. And in fact, the York's got 8.5-inch, something like that. Or is it even that much? No, I don't think it is 8.5-inch. It won't be that many, but 8-point-something-inch guns on the York, the 210 mils. 
Um, yeah, everything else is over 4,000, or in case of the Orc, over 5,000 damage a hit. So you're probably going to be spamming more HE with this thing against battleships. But against cruisers, you might still find a place for the AP. Uh, if you get the broadside of a cruiser, and you can just hit them over and over again with the AP. It's just the sheer number of shells you can put out that will maybe give you that edge. The same, it's got the same 12% fire chance, which is actually exactly the same as the York, despite that having much bigger guns, but the German cruisers are noted for their particularly terrible HE in comparison to, uh, um, like, the, the AP on the German cruisers is really good, and the HE is really terrible, whereas this is more, yeah, this is more of an HE firing ship a lot of the time, I would say. It picks up a bit of anti-aircraft um, to uh, its predecessor, but honestly, I think in terms of AA, this is by far the weakest of the tier 7s. Uh, again, you can take defensive AA fire, you've got a spotter plane, uh, but uh, and, and hydro search as, as an option, but you are maybe not gonna... Like, if somebody comes for you with a, a concerted effort, this is the the tier when you can start to see some quite serious characters, uh, characters, carriers like the Hiryu. Uh, if they come for you, you're probably going to be in trouble. And so defensive AA is probably a good thing to have on this ship. Torpedoes wise, again, four kilometer torps. They are faster and they do a bit more damage, but they're still four kilometer torps. And you actually lose a torpedo in your spread. It's uh, two quad launchers this time round, uh, doing 15,000 damage each and 70 knots. So if you can get close enough, they're probably not going to dodge them, but getting close enough might be an issue. Again, ambush torps or, or suicide torps, you know, there's not a lot else you can do with them. Speed wise, again, nothing special. 35 and a half knots, just ahead of the Miyoko's 35 knots. Um, the others are all around 32 knots. So the speeds uh, in a straight line of these ships all seem to be comparable to the Japanese cruisers. Uh, they are pretty decent in a straight line. However, we're back to having a horrible turn radius, and this time it's a really horrible turn radius. Now, 860 meters for tier 5 was pretty horrible. This has 900 meters. Shall I tell you what else has 900 meters as a turn radius? The Yamato. The Montana's worse at 950, but still, this thing will be outturned by most battleships. Although, of course, most battleships are going to have a much worse rudder shift time. But it's still at the top end on rudder shift for a cruiser as well. It's 8.8, .8, so it's nearly 9 seconds. Um, the rest are uh, much closer to the 8 second mark than the 9 second mark. The uh, York has 8.1 seconds. Uh, the Miyoko and the Pensacola are actually just about 7 seconds each. So your rudder response is not great and your turning radius is horrendous. And it's going to feel like a big step down from the Budioni in that regard. That was a, a really nicely balanced ship. It felt a lot like uh, its contemporaries. Whereas this, well, honestly, I think you go from one of the stronger ships of the line to one of the weaker ships of the line. It, it doesn't have an especially super good range. I mean, the York's got a better range. It is better than the Miyoko and the Pensacola, but still, 16.8 kilometers, you're going to be well within firing range of, of battleships uh, at this tier, and it's maneuvering to use that range that is going to be a problem, and maneuvering to avoid incoming fire. You're just not nimble. You turn like a battleship, and you're going to have to be cognizant of that fact. So, you're basically going to have to sail around behind your allies like a, a an asshole and just fire HE at anything that's within range basically. It feels a lot more like a, a, a support kind of a ship. And to be fair, tier 7 is you kind of now at the tier where cruisers are taking or starting to take a backseat to uh, battleships as the, the kind of real prime damage dealers. At tiers say four to six. In fact, really tiers five and six, uh, I think it, it's a lot more even. There's a lot more fair game between both battleships and cruisers. But you're starting to take more of a passive role from this tier upwards. Although that said, a really good player in a cruiser, even at the high tiers, can um, be 
are very very effective it's just uh the the battleships and the the destroyers and, and everything that you can now meet are that bit much more dangerous and i think battleships especially just with the the amount of citadel damage you can start to take at these tiers so uh being off on your own being focused by enemies you're probably not going to last that long now you can do of course what i was doing here which is use the spotter plane to give you extra range and it does actually seem to have a pretty decent uh use time on it so it's definitely worth packing the premium spotter plane because you want to have as little cooldown as possible because sometimes you're going to need that extra range. On, on a map like Ocean, um, just having that bit of extra range is going to be useful. But I've been very lucky so far in that I have been um, not really focused out at all. I've been sailing near allies the whole time. I've never been off on my own. And I have been lucky enough to escape the attention of the enemy team most of the time. So this is probably not really a representative match in terms of... Um, like what happens if you get focused by the enemy but it does show you what the guns are like and honestly damage wise the actual counter is not very impressive but it doesn't tell the whole story because of course the mod that shows you the damage counter only gives you damage from hits it doesn't give you damage from fires and it doesn't give you damage from flooding and obviously flooding does not pertain to this particular match which is actually just about to end but fire damage does so yeah it's an he spammer but it's a very awkward to use he spammer and i think the progression is some people are going to find it a bit rough going from the kirov which is going to be a bit of a marmite ship some people will love it some people will hate it the budioni is i think undoubtedly going to be very popular and then you get to this which is probably going to be the same. A lot of people are probably not going to like it very much. It might end up with the same kind of reputation that the York has on the German line. So as you can see, um, in terms of score, that wasn't spectacular. But uh, the bulk of my damage, the vast bulk of my damage, came from fires. 10,000 from AP, 21k from 131 HE shells. You really need to spam the HE shells. But... Um, like equaling if not topping both of those was the 30,000 plus fire damage so it really does seem to be about setting those fires and maybe even against enemy cruisers just setting fire after fire after fire so it will be annoying to its enemies but just because it maneuvers so badly uh, if it gets into close quarters with a destroyer for instance or if you start getting focused by a lot of enemies at once, I honestly don't know how long or how well it will survive. So I think this might be an awkward spot on the line, to be quite honest, just as the tier 5 is kind of an awkward spot as well. So hopefully you have found this informative and useful, and if you have, you can leave any comments below. You can hit the like button, you can sub to my channel if you aren't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.